Okay, share my screen. Okay, uh, are you able to see my screen now? Um, so uh, this would be the uh, some materials I will I will share with you later after this lecture, and uh, uh, you can see that. Sorry. Uh, you can see that the uh, the topics that will be covered in uh, in the first midterm. Um, basically, the first midterm will be scheduled on Monday, October eighteenth, and. Uh, the uh, time is uh, 12.30 to 2.30 p.m. It's our uh, tutorial time. Uh, also, uh, just keep in mind that even though we specify two hour sessions for the midterm, it's not necessary for, for you to use all the two hours. Um, I have some extended time. The, uh, the, uh, the rest of 30 minutes is actually designed for you to upload your uh, answer sheet. So you should uh, uh, upload everything before two thirty. That should be how uh, should be. Uh, okay, I'm, looks very weird. Uh, just give that. So uh, for the midterm exam, uh, as I say that you have to uh, upload your answer by uh, two thirty p.m. Also, uh, the exam format is open book, open notes. You will be assigned with the uh, exam sheet on Avenue to Learn at 12.30, which, which I will set is visible for you to check at 12.30, and then you're gonna download the uh, exam sheet and try to uh, work on the other questions. And uh, I believe the most efficient way is like you, you're gonna uh, write it by your hand and scan it later. Uh, or you can just uh, do everything electronically from your computer. Uh, you can use all the uh, reference book that I recommended in the uh, first lecture, or you can uh, refer to all the notes that I uploaded to Avenue to Learn. Uh, that will be sufficient for you to uh, prepare for the midterm exam. Uh, for the um, for the review or for the preparation of the exam. Uh, you should uh, go through all the examples in the notes and uh, the questions in the homework assignment. Uh, basically, uh, all the home, all the questions in the exam will be very similar to the uh, uh, to the homework assignment, and uh, it will be simpler than some of the questions in the homework. Um, so that's the format of the exam. And regarding to the topics, it will actually cover four topics as we uh, have already learned so far, including the basic serving concepts, what's the, uh, what's the horizontal line, what's the vertical line, what's the uh, horizontal angle, what's the vertical angle, and what's the zenith and uh, uh, what's the zenith angle, and so on. And uh, uh, also, there's one concept about the moments and the errors, how we can quantify the uh, errors and uh, what kind of uh, potential errors you will observe in the uh, surveying and so on. And uh, for the rest of two topics, which will be related to the fundamental measurement, including the horizontal distance measurement and the vertical distance measurement, for the horizontal distance measurement, you have to consider the uh, different methods, the, uh, the breaking tape method, and uh, uh, the uh, considering the impact of the uh, the uh, temperatures, tensions, uh, the sag for the correction of the distance measurement, and for the vertical distance, uh, which will mainly about the uh, the potential errors from the uh, curvature and reflection, and also the differential leveling methods. Uh, you need to know how to operate the. Uh, the vertical distance measurement with uh, 
level transit and how to calculate the elevations or the elevation difference of any two points. So that would be uh, all the materials will be covered in the midterm. Uh, do you have any questions about midterm? Uh, is, is that clear for for everyone? Okay. Um. Now we just go to the. Uh, okay. Um. Let me let me uh join the meeting through my other computer so I can check your questions through the uh meeting chat. Um, so uh, it's weird. I uh, just discard that. Um, so uh, I had a question about the uh, the format for you to uh, write down the answer. Uh, there are any specific format. Uh, I have some some requirement in the exam sheet. You can go through them, but uh, there isn't any specific format. The only thing is that you have to write down everything clearly. Um, like if for questions one, you have to clearly mark this part is for question one, part A or part B, and uh, you need you also need to uh, scan your answer sheet in the right orders, like the page one, page two, page three, so that we we can know which party have work with. And for the correction uh, for the grading work, we will try to focus on the uh, method you applied, the steps you applied for the question. Um, the uh, the absolute uh, number, it of course it matters, but it's not the most important part. You will still get points, even, even the absolute number is not right. It's very important for us to uh, find that you, right, you you apply the right method, the right steps to solve the question. Um, so for the uh, for the number of the questions, uh, let me see. The uh, let me just bring out the uh, exam sheet. But not, of course, not a service. <laughs> um, So we have approximately, uh, we actually have, um, let's see. One, two, three, four. We have five questions. Um, some of the questions will, will be in a simple calculation. Um, it's weird. Um, so the, uh, we have five questions and uh, some questions will have two or three uh, small questions, so you can work on them. Uh, it, it's just a simple calculation. You, I will encourage you to use the calculator or use Excel to uh, uh, to complete the detailed calculation. Um, but of course, you need to show these steps to do the calculation. Uh, any other questions? Um, uh, there is one question about the open answer. I'm not quite sure about it. The the uh, the the format of the uh, exam is open book, open notes. So you can you can bring anything uh, for the exam, the course notes and the uh, recommended book. Okay. Um. So that will be the uh, midterm exam. Uh. Oh, another thing about the page number. Yes, you have to write down the page number if you are if you write down everything by your hand, and you need to uh, label the page number and also scan them with the right order. Uh, this will be uh, easier for us to identify uh, we, which how you're going to work on each questions or how you you want to miss any pages. Yeah. Uh, if you, if you complete all the answer in one page in one sheet, of course you don't 
you still need to list the page number, <laughs> just uh, just in the record. Uh, and I, I would encourage you to uh, leave larger space. Do not write everything too tight. It will be hard for us to check uh, your answers. OK. Um, if there's an, any uh, if there's any other questions, I will go to the next topic about the uh, preparation of the lab four, uh, and also some hint for you to prepare for the lab three uh, report. Uh, so in the lab four, which I uh, let me try to bring out the um, the instruction. So the uh, lab instruction has been uploaded to Avenue to Learn. You can go to check the uh, details about uh, what you need to do for the lab four. Basically, in lab four, you need to lay out in the horizontal curve to identify how you can define the smooth curve based on the specific uh, uh, point of the interest, the radius, and the specific angle. Uh, this is just the part of the uh, route survey. We haven't uh, touched that yet. It will be uh, for the route survey. It will, it will be the uh, uh, we will learn them uh, at the second half of the term. But uh, we have limited the instrument, and we need to conduct the experiment earlier. So I want to give you some early uh, background information about the lab experiment, and then you can work on it and uh, analyze the data later. So basically, uh, you will you will for each group actually for uh, each session. You will be assigned with uh, one set of the data, for example, for the for the group seven to eleven. That will be the uh, uh, the group in session one. Uh, I guess it will be the uh, next uh, next Monday morning. Uh, you will be assigned with three values: the pi, the point of the interest; r is the radius of the uh, the curve, and delta would be the angle. And for the other for the other groups, just try to use the information we provide to do the calculation before you go to the field. Uh, and then now, uh, in before you go to the field, we want you to calculate the length of the curve. That's the first thing. And we also want you to calculate the deflection angle and the core distance. Uh, I will, I will, I'll give you a definition about these three terms and the way for you to calculate them. Also, there is a template uploaded on Avenue to Learn for you to uh, find out these values. But you need to modify the input of values, there are those, those values, to get the uh, information by yourself. And the uh, also it has some specific requirement, like you need to place the uh, stake on the uh, on the stations at every five meters, and also the core length. Uh, should be calculated at the from station to station, and you also need to find out deflection angle from the uh, from BC, which is the beginning of the curve. And uh, uh, also, there will be some resolution requirement. You have you need to run the result to the uh, millimeters, and uh, for the uh, angles, you need to run to the seconds, and uh, the. Uh, the, uh, this one should be prepared before we go to the lab. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, so let's go to see how you're gonna uh, how you're gonna prepare for the lab lab four. So let me just show you the uh, slides for the uh, for what kind of things you need to prepare for lab four. Um, so this would be the data that you will um, the data that you will be assigned with. You have the uh, uh, a set of the um, uh, data which will be assigned for the group seven to eleven, group twelve, thirteen to seventeen, and so on. Uh, just uh, so with that, you will have three values: the PI, radius, and delta. Uh, I will just give you an example about what you need, uh, what the uh, horizontal curve looks like. So first, you have the point, which is the point of interest. Uh, uh, as a point of the interaction. So that's the PI. 
Uh, we know where the point is. That will be a pretty fine point. You also have the radius. Uh, R is the radius of the curve. And the delta, uh, I'll just use delta. That will be the uh, the angle of the uh, of the curve. So we say that we have the uh, we have the uh, point of the interest, and uh, you know the uh, radius. Then you're gonna draw the curve. Uh, not the, not this. You draw the curve, and uh, this curve should satisfy several conditions. So the red one, the red one is the curve we are trying to draw. And uh, uh, say that this is the radius, uh, not the center of the uh, the center of the curve. And the radius is a is a, it's the radius of the uh, of the curve, and uh, this would be the length. From O to say that this is a, a BC, that is the uh, begin of curve. And uh, uh, if we draw a line from the point of the interest to the begin of the curve, it should be tangent to the curve. Well, I will just try to uh, make this one be in a circle. Uh, the curve basically is just, just the part of the uh, it's part of the circle, and uh, the line PI to uh, BC should be uh, tangent to the uh, curve, which means that uh, the line O to BC will be perpendicular to the line BC to PI, and also the curve should be ended at one point, which we call it as EC. That is the end of the curve. So uh, the the line PI to B to EC should also be tangent to the curve. So what you will see that if we draw the line uh, to connect the center of the curve to the uh, to EC uh, is also perpendicular to the line PI to EC. So that's the uh, that's the requirement that we need to do to uh, uh, develop the horizontal curve, and uh, um, then uh, in this figure you can find out the information. The radius of the curve is r, and this angle is defined as delta, which is the one we specified as the angle of the curve. And uh, uh, in the in the lab, we want to find out the information about the well, the locations of the station. Say that uh, there is one station we want to find, station one. Uh, we need to specify two values. Uh, I will just try to make it a, uh, uh, just draw the curve with a higher curvature. How uh, this? Station one. And the problem wants us to, uh, in the calculation, you need to find out the, you want to find out the chord. That will be the length from BC, the, the length of the straight line from BC to SI to S1. And the, uh, this, this is the uh, chord length, chord. And also you need to find out the uh, angle that will be the angle between PI B, uh, BC to PI and the BC to S1. This is the uh, deflection angle. So you need to find out these two values, the deflection angle and the length of this chord for each station. So you have one station S, S1 here, you have another station S2 here, then you have a uh, Accept not not this one. Um, then you need to find out the uh, another uh, 
um, the, sorry, this this is not wrong. You need to find out another uh, deflecting angle. So that would be the deflecting angle. And uh, for the chord length, we want to find out the distance between the uh, the between the stations, not from the uh, big uh, BC point. So we want to find out the chord length, which is from S1 to S2 directly. And uh, if we have the uh, S, the station three, that will be S2 to S3 and so on. So uh, those would be the, uh, the information you need to know. And then uh, in, the, in the preparation, you need to find out, uh, let's just assume that the, uh, the deflecting angle is a, uh, uh, Theta, you want to have theta one, theta two. Uh, with with that, uh, you want you have a set of the station, station one, station two, station three, station four, and so on until you reach to the uh, end of the curvature. You will you are able to find out. Uh, you need to find out the length of the chord. Uh, say that is uh, L one, L two. L3, L4, and uh, you, will you need to find out the last one, say Ln, and you need to find out the deflection angle, deflection angle, uh, theta 1, theta 2, uh, theta 3, theta 4, and theta n. So with that, you will, you will be able to identify, if you know where the station is, you will be able to identify uh, no. If we are provided with the chord length and the uh, deflection angle, you are able to find out where the station is in the field. And then you can lay out all these stations along the curve. And uh, for the construction, you just need to, um, I ju you just need to, uh, to uh, go through all these stations that you have already placed. And uh, with that, you will have the curved, the horizontal curve on the road. Um, so that's the uh, the fundamental information, and then let me see how you can calculate the chord length and the uh, deflection angle. So uh, we will start with a, a simple uh, let's start with a curve, and we know that there's an uh, origin and that's the radius and uh, the point of the uh, interest and uh, we have the BC, uh, EC and then we have the station one and we know that the lens given that we know the uh, the length of the curve from um, from BC to S1. Then we can calculate, uh, uh, we can calculate what's the, uh, what's the length of the chord, say L1, and what's the uh, angle, theta1. So for the, uh, for this, for theta1, that will be very simple, theta1, actually equal to um, the, uh, if, we, if we try to do the calculation, that will be uh, the length, assuming that the length of the curve is uh, C1. So say that this, uh, this length of the curve is C1. So theta one is uh, C1 divided by R. And this is a, a angle about the radian, and uh, uh, no, it's, it's not. It's actually half of this. C one divided by uh, two r, and uh, um, and uh, you you need you then you need to change the radian, convert the radian to some value, uh, in degree. Uh, in degree. Uh, minutes and seconds. So that's that's what I what I need to do. 
And uh, for the uh, chord lengths, L1, that will be, uh, that will be relatively uh, simple. L1 basically equals to uh, the radius times sine theta one. So that's the way for you to get the uh, uh, the distance of L1. And uh, uh, also you can find out the, uh, do the calculations for the other points. I will not go to the details about this calculation because they are, uh, it's, it's a, a little bit complicated uh, and it will take some time for the uh, horizontal distance measurement. What I'm gonna share with you is about the, uh, it's about a template. So you can use the template to calculate the uh, location of all the stations. So, So this is the one template I shared with you on uh, Avenue to Learn. It's called the Lab 2 template. Uh, you, wh what do you need to do? You need to do a little bit of modification by yourself. Uh, can you see those? Uh, are you able to see it? Okay, uh, so we have some input, like we have the input information about the uh, the value of pi. So here in the table, in the table, you are provided with the uh, uh, two plus two plus uh, 50, uh, 56 or two plus 61. The two indicates that 200. So uh, two plus 56 means 256. And this is similar for all the other uh, locations. And then uh, you have the, uh, here I just set a uh, random value. I said it's a two plus 18.295. And we know the radius, the radius is 140. You can change it to the value specified by, uh, for your group. And we also have the angle for the, uh, uh, which is delta. Uh, here I, cause in like cell, I cannot put them in, in one uh, cell. So we have 20 degree, eight minutes and 20 seconds. You need to modify, change it to your uh, to your own value. And then once you type all those information, type all those inputs, you will, uh, this, this template will calculate the location of the beginning, beginning of the curve and end of the curve. So these two are calculated automatically and uh, it will also calculate the length of the curve. This is also automatically. And uh, for now, you have to specify how many stations you need to uh, place between uh, BC and EC. So from BC, uh, well, I will just put the first one here. The BC is 193 point something. So the next station will be some uh, some distance rounded at every 10 seconds, uh, at every 10 minutes. So 93, the next for next station is 200. And the next one is uh, 200 and uh, as the second station, 210, uh, 220, 30, 40, until you reach to the last one, 242. So uh, if, if you find something, uh, something larger, say that uh, uh, clearly how you reach to, uh, if we change this one to 30, you have the BC will be uh, 100, will be uh, 180, and uh, the uh, EC will be um, 250. Then you need to do some uh, slightly modification. So you need to change EC to, uh, this would be EC. And uh, you, have, you need to have some other values. The, the next session after 180 would be 190 and then 200. And then you have to uh, go to all the other uh, 210, 220, 30, 40, 50, uh, 50 and 254. And uh, you can then actually do the modification, calculate the uh, just to do the expansion for all these cells. So you will get the chord length 
from the uh, third column, the deflection angle. This is the deflection angle in uh, in radian, and this is the uh, deflection angle in uh, degree, minutes, and seconds. So with this template, you get all the values automatically. Uh, but of course, you need to specify how many how many sessions, how many stations you have to place on that curve. Um, so once you have the quarter length and the uh, deflection angle, so you can then place your station. So let's go back to the. Uh, so once you have the quarter length and the. Uh, so say that you you, you can find out the BC, you know the uh, you you know you just know the BC and you also know the uh, PC uh, point of the interest. So this is uh, the only thing you uh, you provided. Uh, BC is actually some something you uh, you calculated from the template. Uh, PI is the uh, location you are given by the TA or by the lab te technician in the experiment. Then you draw a uh, straight line, and uh, you are provided with the quarter length and the uh, the deflection angle. For example, you have theta one and the quarter length L1. So for the first station, find out the uh, angle, find out the angle, which this angle is a theta one, and with the quarter length, with the quarter length L1, and uh, with that, you have the uh, station one. So this is where you're gonna place the station one. And for the second one, for the second one, you also have the, you have another deflection angle. You have theta two and L two. So you have theta two. So this is the deflection angle theta two, and uh, you also have the quarter lens. So we start from the station one. You have the quarter lens uh, with the fixed lens, and say that this this is the one L two you can obtain. And this one will only interact with the direction, with this direction at one point. So this will be the uh, station two. And the lens, the core lens is L2. And it can do the similar process for uh, uh, station three and until reach to the end of the curve. The end of the curve, and uh, this is the station. So you are in the field. You will only place the stake at the station. So you only know these points. You only know these points. And uh, for the construction purpose, you just uh, try to find out a way to. Uh, if you have the station, uh, you have the number of stations large enough, then you will you will get approximately a uh, smooth curve from BC to EC. So with that, you are able to get a horizontal curve on the road. Of course, it take a, lo take a lot of time for you to find out the accurate uh, angle, but uh, this is the uh, the way for you to uh, improve the, um, to join the horizontal curve in reality for the constructions of the highways or for some uh, constructions of buildings with some uh, smooth angles. Um, so, uh, so that's the way for you to do the lab experiment uh, for try to follow the, uh, the the template to calculate to get the uh, the quarter length the deflection angle for uh, for all the stations and in the field based on the uh, instruction I just provide to you to get the uh, location find the location of each station and that's what you need to do try to record everything during the experiment. Uh, any uh, any questions about it? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, so. Uh, I will also want to save some time for the lab uh, 
for the lab four, uh, lab three. Um, and uh, in lab three, I think some, most of you have already finished the lab three. And in the lab three, uh, you, will, you will see how you're going to, uh, uh, there will be some information about how you're going to handle your, uh, your analyze the data. Uh, let me see. So for the lab three, you, are, you will be instructed to do the travels and uh, say that you're going to join uh, You join the area with a with a, a five corners, and uh, you have the length of each one: L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5. You also measure the interior angles: alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, alpha four and alpha phi. And uh, now for the uh, for the analysis of the data, you need to do a correction about the angle you measured. And you know that for the uh, N side polygon, um, the total angle, say that the uh, The, if we summarize the angles, the all the angles, the total value will be m minus two times 180 degree, right? Uh, for your case, for your case, you uh, you actually have all the values. So you measured alpha one, alpha two, tier alpha five. This is just for one example, um, and you find that the uh, the value, the sum i from one to n alpha i, might be different might not be exactly m minus two times 180 degree. So there might be some difference. Uh, with that, you need to identify the difference. So the difference, uh, say that the delta alpha will be uh, this, the observed summation minus the uh, theoretical total value. And then you need to split, split these errors to each one. So for the, uh, uh, for the delta alpha will be uh, the capital delta alpha divided by n, and for each for the correction alpha alpha i for each angle alpha i will be alpha i um, minus delta alpha. So with that we have the correction, and uh, by doing this. If we summarize all the corrected, if we do the summarize, summarize all the corrected angle, it should be equal to m minus two times 180 degree. So you need to find out the corrected angle for uh, for each one you measured in the Travers lab. Okay. Uh, so I want to save some time for you, and uh, uh, it's uh, especially for the uh, lab four. It's a little bit complicated. So if you have any questions, just uh, raise your questions, and I will try to uh, give you uh, more explanation about the part that is not that are not uh, easy for you to understand. So uh, any questions about it? Uh, you can raise your hand. And uh, I'll, I'll try to uh, go to the meeting chat, but um, um, so for there's a question about the online group. For online group, you uh, we do not have the uh, data from the previous years, but uh, you will be assigned with the uh, uh, some info some. Uh, Information about the uh, some set of the data about the PI R and uh, the uh, the radius and the the angle and you need to use the template to do the calculation and draw and draw the curve by yourself and that will be the way for you to uh, uh, to prepare the lab form and uh, you uh, the deadline for lab four is actually uh, uh, maybe uh, at me in the middle in the middle of November, it will be uh, it will it will stay out like uh, more than one month, 
and you will get more information for you to uh, understand how you're going to uh, process the data. Uh, so for the online student, yeah, for the lab four, you just work on the data provided, but you will be provided with different uh, information. So it's not the uh, it's not the one I shared in the uh, uh, in the lab instruction. Uh, in the lab instruction, it's only for the uh, in-person students. Any any other questions? So the uh, the for for the lab experiment for now, you you don't need to understand the uh, inside of of the uh, calculation. What's the formula is going to use? I'm trying to introduce the formulas here. Uh, if you are interested, you can go back to watch the video and try to understand what's the uh, how to do the calculation. But uh, uh, for now, you don't need to uh, use these uh, formulas to the calculation. You just need to uh, use the template. Uh, the template that I provided uh, and try to get your own input, the uh, PI, R, and delta values. Uh, those templates will, will show you the values of the quarter lens, the deflection angle. And uh, uh, after that, you can just, uh, uh, you can just uh, bring the data to the field to complete the lab experiment. Um, I would like to give you a uh, one more one more round about what you need to do once you have the lab once you have the uh, the all the lab data uh, from the template. So we are uh, from the template. Eventually, you will get uh, the BC information. Uh, session one, session two, session three. Uh, I just said that there will be three uh, three sessions and EC information, and you have the quarter lens the deflection angle and the, uh, the core lens will, will be L1, L2, L3, L4 and uh, you have the deflection angle um, theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, theta 4. So those would be the information you will obtain directly from the template. In the field, the TA, so I'm just assuming that you are just imagine that you are working in the field. The TA will tell you where the point of the interest state is. So that's that's what the TA will let you know. And then you will you will use the uh you will use the uh point of the interest to find out BC. Uh, basically you can calculate you, you know the the distance of PI from the uh, from the data we assign to you, you will know the uh, location of BC based on the calculation, and the using just find out the straight line with the distance, and then at the piece at BC, uh, first try in the deflection angle, see that one, see that one, and then the quarter lens, L one, and this would be the first station. This would be the first station, station one. And the, once you have identified the station one, put in a stake in station one and go to the next one, you know you will have one point about the station one. And start from station one, uh, you will need to do another thing. Uh, first, at the uh, beginning of the chord, try to draw another, draw another line, a, a straight line with the angle of theta 2, that will be the deflection angle we get. And start from the uh, station 1, using the length of, is the length of L2, and uh, just using the fixed length with the, with the distance we get. And you can uh, rotate it around the S1 and uh, find out the interaction between, find out the interaction between uh, the, the line the, uh, the line you get and the uh, direction from start from BC. So that would be the S2. And uh, you can then start from S2, do the similar process, find out the uh, uh, where the S3 is, 
and then eventually find out where the EC is. And uh, you put them together, put them together, connect them together, that will be in the curve you have to create for the uh, for the uh, for the horizontal curve, and that's your major task in lab four. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, as I say that you don't need to understand the uh, calculations, the detailed formulas for the calculation for now. Just uh, try to uh, work on the uh, work on the uh, laying out the stake based on the information you calculated from the uh, lab four template. And uh, for the uh, lab four, uh, it depends. There will be some some group who will work on the uh, will work on the lab four uh, after the reading week. That's the reason I want to give you some background information about it. And uh, uh, some will work on the lab five. Lab five is fine. Lab five is a uh, uh, is a uh, is a steer about the operation of the total station and their horizontal and the vertical distance. Um, only for the lab three is about laying out of the curve, horizontal curve. Um, so uh, you can try to collect the data, do the computation by yourself at the beginning, and then later on, uh, you can you will get more information about how to analyze the data for uh, from the field experiment. Okay. Uh, any any other questions? Okay, uh, if uh, if no, then probably that'll be all about the lecture today. And just feel free to uh, send me email or drop a message through Teams. Um, we will have the uh, midterm exam uh, after the reading week. And uh, uh, let me know if you want, you want to get any help for the preparation of the midterm. And if there's any questions you are not clear about the homework assignment examples, feel free to send me email. Okay. Um, I okay. Um, Joseph, do you have a question? Oh, uh, sorry, sir. Just saying bye. Have a nice day. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Um, okay. Uh, I think that will be all today, and uh, hope everyone can enjoy the reading week. Uh, feel free to contact me even during the re reading week. Okay. Okay. That will be all. Thank you very much for your time, and I will see you uh, on, in the other Friday, other Monday.